flag our, our, our flagpole and county flag were behind the governor for the state of the state yesterday. The flagpole that was in here will be back tomorrow. Okay. That's and for everybody's information, for anybody who's interested, I'm sorry to interrupt your meeting, but um, the governor's um, people, uh, he will have a commissioner coming down to go over the highlights of the state of the state Great. tomorrow. It will take place at Sullivan County Community College. I don't know the time yet, but as soon as I do, I'll let you know. Um, so if anybody is interested, they're looking for you know people to come up. Oh, we did receive that on the email. You managed to have a little more notice. Okay. I think it does have a little more notice. You should have that. Absolutely. It's supposed to be in a week right now. Is that wine scenes? No. All right. With that. But anyway, that's it. The flagpole will be back tomorrow. Okay. So the absence of a flag will grow the pledge of allegiance, and I'll just get right into the presentations. So I'm going to do a quick presentation on aesthetics um, and community character, and then uh, Ethan and Jill will be doing uh, a PowerPoint presentation on the River Quarter project. I'm going to make it brief, but at the last meeting, I started talking a little bit about the, um, the need to really start concerning ourselves with the, um, the aesthetics of new development in, in the county, uh, signage, et cetera. And I thought what I would do is just kind of quickly go through a little PowerPoint um, to uh, give you a sense of some of the, the tools that are available uh, to communities in terms of um, addressing uh, design issues uh, that help start the dialogue so that hopefully we can, uh, the county can begin to work with the municipalities to perhaps put in place some of the regulations and design standards. Uh, so that as growth occurs, um, we enhance the character of our community rather than uh, adversely affect it. And um, some of the tools that are used, uh, communities for corridors in particular, they may have an overlay district. You could have design guidelines, uh, you could have architectural review. Um, there's a whole myriad of, of tools that are available. They're listed there. Um, and then I'm going to go into just a quick discussion of, it's also important as you're looking at new developments that uh, the development uh, is sensitive to the, the place in which uh, the development occurs. So I'm going to have some examples of family dollars, one uh, up in Liberty that is an example of insensitive con uh, uh, design um, given the historic character of all the buildings that surrounded it. So. Do um, you have a hard copy of this, just out of curiosity? I do not. I, uh, Could you make one available? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, we can make that available. Um, I'm not going to. I'm not going to read through the whole thing here, but uh, you'll have a lot of nationally. You have a lot. There are a lot of uh, national and regional franchises. Typically, they'll come into a community. They're saying, "This is our prototype. This is the only thing that we do." And many communities kind of fall for that, but the reality is there are alternatives to many of, uh, alternative designs for many franchises, and if a community adopts uh, design review regulations and architectural review regulations, a community can compel the franchise uh, or chain store to actually modify their prototype store. And many communities have done that successfully, especially those communities that sell themselves as tourism destinations like Lake Placid and Saratoga and um, many communities throughout the, uh, throughout the country. Like these, uh, I think I mentioned this before, it's important not to get into desperation economics that so just don't accept the first thing that comes in. And um, this is an important point, so I will read from the script on this one. Uh, if you have a, for the municipalities, if you have a company that's coming in to open a store, the, the reason they're there is that the strength of your retail trade area is the reason the franchise or the chain store wants to be there. They've done their market analysis. They know this is an area where they can come in and make money. It just gives the communities a little leverage when it comes to asking for concessions on the design, landscaping, et cetera. So here's an example of context insensitive design, or two examples, one family dollar store, uh, on Main Street in Liberty, where it used to be really a beautiful uh, Woolworth store. And um, Family Dollar came in and uh, took it over, but rather than 
really embrace the the architecture of the historic World War store. They just ripped off the front facade and the leaded glass and decided, you know, to put your prototypical family dollar right there on Main Street. Uh, they did the same thing up in Albany off of Central Avenue. Um, but there are many examples throughout the country where communities that had design regulations in place uh, compelled uh, this national chain store to make modifications so that the character of the store complemented rather than detract from the central business district. Um, these are just some context and sensitive design examples that I've seen in my travels. Uh, one's actually in Ellenville, which is my least favorite Rite Aids of, <laughs> of, all, um, of all the ones that I've seen, actually. Um, but I'm going to go in and show you some very nice examples uh, in a few moments. So these are more context sensitive design. Uh, you'll notice a lot more landscaping uh, around the chain store franchise. Uh, the Wendy's up in Colony. Um, you know, it's not your prototypical um, uh, Wendy's. There's a peaked roof and there's it's brick and they've done some things to try to make it more aesthetically pleasing and to, you know, um, fit into the rural uh, character of that community. These are just a sampling of Dunkin' Donuts, so it's clear there's no one prototype of Dunkin' Donuts. Um, I think I have an example from North Adams, Mass, uh, Lark Street in Albany, Rensselaer, and Burlington, Vermont, uh, and again, North Adams. But, you know, communities that have design regulations uh, can ask for modifications to these franchises so that uh, it embraces the character of their communities. Uh, these are just several more examples of Dunkin' Donuts, just kind of prove the point. Uh, <coughs> there is no one prototype. Um, these are some uh, different pharmacies. The, the uh, Rite Aid in the upper left-hand corner is actually in Lake Placid. It's the same box store. But they've just added, you know, some architectural elements to it to kind of blend into that um, Adirondack style that they've embraced up there. In some cases, overwhelmingly. Um, but uh, the, I think the Rite Aid there is on Central Avenue in, I believe that's Central Ave. Yes, up in Albany. And then there's a CVS in uh, Southbury, Connecticut. Again, you know, these are pharmacies, but they're not your prototypical. Uh, pharmacies, much more landscaping, much more attention to the architectural design, uh, subtle signage. So you can ask uh, for concessions. And I think if, as development occurs in a county, if we do that on a project by project basis over time, we're going to have a much more attractive and uh, visually appealing environment to attract visitors to come to the county. Um, I do have some examples from Sullivan, the uh, Medicap Pharmacy up in Livingston Manor. Um, that was a substantial renovation. I don't think there was too much left of the historic structure after the renovation in, there, in addition on the back. But, you know, they maintained uh, the building lines along the uh, new sidewalks. And, um, you know, I think it, it, it fits in. And it's Eckert's Pharmacy, or former Eckert's. It's no longer Eckert's up there in Corning. And I think I may have. Oh, all right. These are... Actually, it's a, that's a supermarket up in the upper left-hand corner. It's a price chopper. Again, it's in Lake Placid. Um, Rite Aid and the M&T Bank. But there is a certain design aesthetic, uh, kind of a rural Adirondack you know, character that fits in. Um, and it's done very well. These are just some additional examples. Uh, Saratoga, Lake Placid. It's actually a gas station on Main Street. Or I forget if it's Main Street or Broadway up in Saratoga. Um, and uh, Brugger's Bakery, which I believe is also up in, I want to say it's Saratoga. Saratoga. In Saratoga, right? Um, just some other examples uh, of, you know, national stores or, or chains that, you know, fit in. Got Burlington, Vermont up there. Actually, my daughter, when she's only like four years old, so she's 16 now. <laughs> That's up in Burlington. Uh, and 
this is up in Albany and Great Barrington. Home Depot. This is actually the Home Depot in Kalispell, Montana, which actually doesn't have the t prototypical orange. They made them go with the green um, awning or faux awning. And that the Fort Collins Walmart is a little more upgraded. The one, I didn't have a chance to take a picture of the new Walmart in Napanock, but they actually did a very nice job in the design of that. It actually includes, you know, has some stone, and um, as Walmart goes, they did, a, you know, aesthetically, they did a pretty nice job with that new Walmart store in Napanock, and that's a stone's throw from us. And uh, if they can do it there, certainly it's something I think, you know, our communities can start to embrace. And just, just an example of how landscaping can really make a big difference. Uh, landscaping, pedestrian connections, pedestrian scale lighting. Um, so these are all things, you know, uh, as we move forward and hopefully as growth starts to occur, we can begin to uh, incorporate into new developments uh, within the county. So I'll leave you with the quote from Winston Churchill, we shape our buildings and afterwards our buildings shape us. And that's very profound and very true. Cindy? Oh, I, I, that's great. I think it's really good. But can you kind of help me understand, like, if we were to move ahead and, um, you know, try to follow some of the recommendations from other areas that did that, yeah. what is the barrier? Okay. Because I feel like sometimes maybe the feeling is if a business comes in, you know, they might relocate elsewhere if we tell them we'd like this, this, or this. How does that process happen? Are the chain stores open to doing that? They, or they do are. they have to do that if we have regulations in place? And who would lead that? Would it be? It would be the municipality. Mm -hmm. I think the role that yeah. that county planning can, can play is an educational role. So making available either model uh, guidelines or um, examples. The, um, you know, I, also could have mentioned, uh, is it Family Dollar or Dollar General in Smallwood? Uh, yeah. Dollar General. Dollar General. You know, obviously they made some concessions there to uh, to modify their, their prototype so it fit in a little nicer <coughs> community. I think, I think there may be another Dollar General proposed in Fallsburg. Yeah. Um, yes. Yes. So, you know, they, and Fallsburg does have uh, design guidelines, so they, they have, uh, some ability to ask for concessions there. I think it's it's really an education process. Um, I would say in like in Saratoga, it was a gradual uh, stepping into um, having uh, greater requirements for design review, so that it wasn't everything all at once. Um, but I do think I think every project matters, uh, and that if you ignore you know, if you just allow the basic box store uh, to go in in your in your communities from this point in time, and you, and you don't look at, you know, take a hard look at the aesthetics, the landscaping, the design of the buildings, then we're then Sullivan County is just going to evolve into the it's referred to as the geography of of, of anywhere. Uh, we're just going to be like any other place. We're just going to be, you know, Route 211 corridor or whatever. I don't think we want to become that. If, if we're going to be a tourism destination, then I think we need to strive to a higher aesthetic. And you see the success in communities like Saratoga and Lake Placid uh, that really started to pay attention to the design. And um, there's example of example. Uh, you know, if you if you don't pay attention to the design and you just become you know look like every other place in the country, what is the compelling reason for, for people to visit and come back? Ira, you don't know. Uh, yeah, I think it's really getting the point across that it's part of the review process. I mean, in in Fallsburg, it used to be the responsibility of the planning board, and then they set up an architectural review board that works in coordination with the planning board. So every project that comes through Fallsburg, besides going through the planning board, they have to go and obviously you need restrictions or zoning to, to give the, the power 
to the Architectural Review Board, but in time you're going to see changes, and, and it really, it's, that's the way to do it, uh, is to set up, have the zoning empower an Architectural Review Board, whether it's a chain store or a business that's just going and expanding, that you start controlling, signage, all these things, and I'm starting to work in Fallsburg. But each, oh, I'm sorry. But Alan, I mean, if each township, I mean, and their planning board decides on their regulations and what they want to bring into the townships and they have their own criteria, but so how can the county get involved? Are you as a planner, what are you suggesting? Because we don't normally tell the townships what to do. Cause and, and we can't. And we can't. Because number so, one, when you do that, right, it gets, it's just, it's very territorial. you're going to do the opposite. Yeah. So how, how would I you? Think it's, I think it's an edge a series of educational forums. Right, we used to do trainings a lot more often where we had um, Department of State come down. We have them come down still, and we have one coming up, but you know, to do some of these community aesthetics or design guidelines and some other tools for them to do, because the more you can educate these boards, the more they know that they can ask those questions. Because right now, a developer comes in, they want to do it as cheap as possible, right. and they want to use plans that they already have available. And so, you know, the boards want a development and like they'll desperate yeah. economics they'll take yeah. it and so they need to know that no you can ask them to you know and have these concessions and so, so are we the doing more that? we can do that oh. education okay. again we only have three people right now we are getting two more which thank you so much for um, but the more we can build up the more we have the capacity to go out and do more training like that in the short term I'm you know I'm more than willing to go out with Joe and Ethan and, and do a couple of forms and, and and Heather and because uh, I think you know we have the resources mm -hmm. to be able to do that um, Kitty I think for us as a county to grow not just the people who are coming to visit us but the people who live here if you're working in a place that looks nicer you feel better about working in there whether that's in Rite Aid or that's in Subway or no matter where it is if the building looks nicer, you feel better about being in there. And I think Livingston Manor is a prime example. They did improve how it looks. Yeah. It has more people coming to it, and the people who work in those shops are happier despite the flooding. They stay there because they like the community involvement. And I know Saratoga, where my son lives, Main Street sometimes closes so that they can have big festivals, whether it was Santa Claus or, you know, Halloween. The town goes and the people come because of the beauty of the area. Malt is another example. They were very careful that they didn't have, you know, big arches of Donald's. I mean, you don't need those things anymore. Where you needed that identification perhaps in the past to try to find the places that, to go to, to eat, to this. Everybody does it on their phone anymore. <laughs> you know? They don't need that, the double arches to find where something is. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to make a point that since we're talking about Main Street, and both Jill and Ethan know this, there's very specific guidelines, design guidelines as part of that program. So I think that's important to make the municipalities aware in either an partnership with the county or whichever. Um, that if you're going to pursue Main Street money, there are some specific guidelines in there that you would need to design guidelines that would need to be taken into consideration. Is that the CDBG? Is that correct, Ethan, that, Jill? That's something yeah. that we've encouraged or we make sure that we do is have those guidelines because if we're going to fund it, we want to make sure that it is looking aesthetically pleasing. And I guess that's the carrot with the that the county can offer. Who's the funder uh, there? The I, don't know. Know. Talk. Uh, I know we got it. I have a suggestion. <laughs> we're going to talk about um, that. <laughs> And I'd be more than happy to help too. I think that we all realize, you know, that it's all room. Municipalities have, you know, the authority. But I think it would, it would behoove us all with what I believe that the economic growth that's going to happen uh, in the next couple of years that we we set up uh, with planning and some members of this committee with the board of supervisors to meet with them and then request to have a meeting with all the planning boards of Sullivan County to try to get, we can't force anything, but let it be a group effort of trying to to do things with architectural review and not press them, but say that we all realize the growth, you know, uh, is on its way. Let's see what we can do before it happens instead of after. Uh, 
I mean, and, and, I, and you as chairman, I'd, I'd be more than happy to help you. But I think that's the avenue because we don't have the control. But we work together and we go to them and say, well, what can we do to help you? I think it may be the right road, road to go. I, that's a good point. I, I, I tend to agree with that. because, And you have some new supervisors, so now might be the time to do it. At, when they're fresh in, kind of, you know, all right, so it's just a matter of scheduling it then. Um, I want to let Ethan uh, go on to the next. Thank you for the discussion. The, Ethan is going to go over the River Quarter uh, Main Street program, uh, which kind of will tie, I think, nicely into this discussion. And um, so without further ado. Oh, yes. You don't want to use the key Oh, okay. Thanks, Alan, and thanks for that uh, great introduction uh, in terms of um, for good principles designed for for small communities. Uh, it was interesting. Uh, there's just one comment on on the last presentation showing chain stores coming into Main Street areas or downtown areas is remarkable. Something we don't really see here, but um, and they will the sort of design of least uh, resistance. They will want parking. They won't want a parking lot. But you can see Brugger's. You can see Subway on Main Streets in the communities that Alan showed where they're. Um, they're, they're not having their own parking. They're not surrounded by a sea of parking, and they're coming into the traditional downtowns, not just on the outlying strips. It's a very important point. So, um, so um, you have handouts of the PowerPoint. I also have uh, tables of some facts and figures that we're going to show in terms of grants. But if I sh can just jump in. This is. Um, Um, so what, what I'm here to present, or we're here to present today, is uh, Sullivan County's involvement in a state program, as Art referred to, the, which is called the New York Main Street Program. So that's, that's, a, uh, it, it, that's the name for a program um, fun, funded out of Albany. Uh, and what we branded our local iteration of the uh, New York Main Street Program here is the, the Sullivan County's River Corridor Main Street Program. So um, there's a lot of programs here, but that's sort of the derivation of it. Um, in terms of who was involved, uh, it was this, the county through the Division of Planning. We were the applicant, um, but we worked uh, closely with primarily the three business groups and the three hamlets in Calicoon, Marysburg, and Berryville, but also that was facilitated through the towns of Delaware, uh, Tustin, and Highland. Uh, I also want to acknowledge it wasn't just planning, it was a this has been a multi-year effort um, with tremendous support from Grants Administration, from Art and Vicki and others there, um, the County Attorney's Office, um, OMB, as well as um, SASD helping with some of the projects. Because as you'll see, there were, or as reflected on the table, there were about 18 projects and a lot of contracting, a lot of procurement issues, and figuring out the, how to make the regulations of the state program fit um, to get the money spent at the local level. Um, so it was, so our program was a sort of branding, the River Carter Main Street program was a branding of a two, 2010 New York Main Street grant of $500,000, uh, which funded local projects in the Upper Delaware River Corridor. It resulted in 18 projects assisting building owners and businesses in what I'm going to explain as Main Street target areas in each of the three hamlets. It also helped streetscapes, um, some public space improvements. We applied, um, four years ago, <laughs> spring of 2010, and um, the contract period was uh, end of 2010 through uh, end of 2013. Um, so why did we do this, just in terms of um, the sort of rationale? There was a we felt there was a strategic alignment with long-term planning initiatives, the opportunity presented by the New York Main Street program um, to fit with goals of the local, local Waterfront Revitalization Program, or LWRP, which you've heard about from from Heather and uh, planning previously, uh, and is involved with several of the communities, all the communities in the River Corridor. Uh, the Upper Delaware Scenic Byway, which was a New York State DOT designation that predated the LWRP um, under Allen's leadership of the planning department. Um, the Community and Economic Development Charette of 2009, um, which uh, reiterated or um, ratified a focus on the River Corridor, and our Sullivan County's own uh, Main Street programs, um, which were run from basically 
in the heyday from about 1998 to 2005. Um, so that a little bit on that history, um, I won't go into in depth, but um, and perhaps in the discussion afterwards we can talk about it. But Sullivan County had created a Main Street Redevelopment Center program with some federal grants in around starting around 1998. Um, that funded facade grants, small business loans, and technical assistance. Um, <coughs> overall, uh, about a million and a half was invested between half, about half of that in grant funds and then half in financing or uh, direct match by the uh, building business owners and um, 150 buildings and 30 main streets around the country. Um, my understanding of the history was that the county's program um, was somewhat the basis or a model for the uh, state program, uh, which was yeah. created in 2004, and I think yeah, yeah. Uh, Alan <laughs> helped um, sort of uh, make that translation of what had worked here. And then county planning continued to stay involved once the state program rolled out in 2004 in that we provided support to the community groups that applied uh, to the Monticello and the partnership, uh, Cunningham Lake and Bethel LDC, uh, Liberty most recently, 2010, and um, just recently announced um, we were the applicant with the village, village of Monticello for a Main Street Technical Assistance Grant. Um, what's, what this is showing is that up until 2010, only uh, nonprofits could apply. You had to be a, a, an, a, an incorporated 501c organization. So um, counties, villages, municipalities could not apply until 2010. Um, so the county gave its expertise um, to some of these programs. I think Kanyanga Lake is the best example. Um, I believe the County Planning Department developed the documents, the templates, um, helped with the outreach and the sort of pro program design that was used in Kanyanga Lake. And then administered by the uh, Bethel LDC. Could you go back one slide just then? Yep. You can, so when, for example, uh, that uh, computer uh, cyber cafe that opened on Main Street in Liberty this past year, yeah. came to the county and got uh, a loan. Okay. That's strictly coming from county share. It's not coming from any of these. It's coming from, it would go on this slide. It's coming from Sullivan County's um, Main Street Revolving Loan Fund, which is one of the programs remaining from the early um, county-based revolving. Um, Main Street programs. Okay, and so it's not coming from a New York State program. Oh, so all, this is only state funding that's coming. That's up here on the slide. Up here is actually all the well, it's the county's involvement with our own programs, and then um, I was just listing the state grants that we supported. Gotcha. So, so yes, there are still um, <coughs> businesses coming in for Main Street revolving loan funds that are administered by the uh, re revolving loan fund loans that are administered by the planning department that are a holdover from when we had more integrated Main Street programs. So now that loan program, revolving loan fund, is able to stand alone because the money coming in and out is stable? Yes. Uh, I believe, it, yeah. It, yeah, I mean, the hope is, yeah. I mean, that yeah. we help do more with small businesses, but the revolving loan fund is still revolving, so it's still there, yeah. but it would be nice to continue these efforts mm -hmm. so that we are still combining oh, I efforts. I just didn't stuff, know where it fit so. on yeah. your slide because so I'm trying to figure out yeah. how how a municipality gets the attention you know who reaches out first I'm gonna show a little the history okay. here uh, of how we went after this opportunity as I said before uh, before 2010 um, and I took out a slide but <laughs> that explained the state program but the state program the state Main Street program typically focuses on very discrete areas they want a two or three block Main Street target area in one community so it was always challenging for the county to to justify a countywide application are we going to do it in Wordsboro are we going to do it in Liberty are we going to apply for um, Eldred um, so in 2010 there was a unique opportunity under this program there was a, a larger funding amount than was typically available grants could be um, requested up to 500,000 where they typically were 200,000 was the cap. And for the first time, municipalities could apply. Um, so since 2010, municipalities can still apply to administer this pot of money locally, but the, the funding has not been up at that level since then. So the, the opportunities that sort of presented themselves in 2010 were the larger funding amount, um, the county could be the applicant, and therefore could bring our expertise to smaller communities that didn't have their own local development corporation or um, even a chamber that Roscoe had a chamber that was an incorporated 
501c6, so they were able to apply in 2009, and we helped them. We wrote the grant application uh, with them based on the experience in Kanyanga Lake. So um, our strategy then was to come up, and it was after the charrette when this map was created, looking at the regions of the county beyond individual municipalities, and we came up with a concept for a river corridor Main Street program. So our Main Street wouldn't be two blocks long, but it was 30 miles long, or what, I guess it's 18 miles long from Calicoon to Berryville. Um, sort of leveraging that, the work on the byway and the uh, designation of New York State, uh, State Route 97 as a scenic byway, calling that our, and the river, our regional Main Street for the river corridor at least, um, as well as the goals of the LWRP. While um, strengthening the, um, downtown areas in the three largest hamlets as sort of uh, um, nodes along that regional Main Street. Mm -hmm. So we worked with Calicoon, Narrowsburg, and Barryville. Um, they are the largest mixed-use commercial districts. They seem like the best targeted areas. Um, and there were willing partners. There were willing business associations in each group. Um, this is in your handout. I won't go over it, but there are a lot of common themes given state um, priorities over the years between the LWRP program and the Main Street program. Historic preservation, downtown revitalization, um, strengthening the assets of, of older communities. And then there were a few extra goals in, Main, in the Main Street program um, that related more to buildings than this regional approach. So energy efficiency, code violations should be corrected, and handicap accessibility was encouraged. So while we have our our regional Main Street with the three stars on the dot, um, within each community we had to identify a target area, um, and that's the yellow line here in Calicoon. And each one, you'll see, kind of had a goal um, of why we picked these target areas. One, for, first of all, they were where the most concentrated and older buildings were. Um, we wanted, again, to not fund the chain stores on the edge of town, but fund a chain store or an investment or reinvestment in the historic core. And in Calicoon, they have been working um, on a goal that, mm -hmm. that we help them articulate to connect the door drive, the park, and the river, the farmer's market at the bottom of the screen to Main Street, Lower Main Street, and Upper Main Street. And in Calicoon, Upper and Lower Main Street are, so, are separated by the railroad tracks. So we call that Railroad Plaza, which you'll see again. Um, in Narrowsburg, or the pork chop, as you see here, um, there's this sort of triangular shape formed by Main Street on the left and Bridge Street running down from Kirk Road to the bridge. Um, so the Tustin Theater and the library are at the right-hand side of the screen. And there was a goal in creating this district to try to connect and make Main Street visible from up by the government buildings uh, at Kirk Road so that when you approached Narrowsburg, you knew that Main Street was down there. And you tried to, tried to connect the two major streets. In Barryville, um, Barryville, small as it is, is an, sort of an example of suburban sprawl. So a lot of the businesses stretch out west here along 97, but this is the historic core where the canal came. It's where the bridge to Pennsylvania to Shahola is at the bottom of the screen. So the goal here was to reestablish the historic core, the approaches from 97 and 95, and the bridge, and kind of slow people down when they come into Barryville along 97 or 55. And that's where the oldest buildings are. So uh, there was a lengthy process required um, and encouraged by the state program in administering a local program, um, outreach to the building owners. Um, we, engaged, we engaged our countywide partners from the beginning on the application and in selecting projects, um, which were Sullivan Renaissance, the Visitors Association, County Chamber, the IDA, and the partnership, uh, all helped us in uh, vetting and selecting projects. Uh, we developed the design guidelines. There's the, the cover on the on the right, and that was based on previous um, work with Connie, that the guidelines that we had developed with Connie on the lake, and I guess prior to that for the county's own Main Street grants. Um, so we, we tweaked those to be to fit um, this program. Um, referrals to the revolving loan funds. So again, um, how uh, so businesses that were interested in the Main Street grant, everyone we we tried to not give them their full grant request and said, well, here's a loan fund that you can use to um, bridge the rest, the gap in your project. Um, so in the end, uh, it took three years instead of two, but it was a larger, typically the grants for two years are 200,000, and we, we took on 500,000 in three communities. Um, 
So eight mixed use pro eight unique projects were undertaken in twelve buildings uh, because sometimes there was multiple projects over multiple years or different or tenants within a building um, got grants. Um, total investment, roughly in terms of the projects, the businesses and buildings was about four hundred thousand. Uh, total investment was over a million. Uh, I have to give. <laughs> I have to, so that's down here. I have to give some shout out to the Western Sullivan Public Library who really tipped our leverage because we funded the, Cal the uh, additions to the Calhoun Branch Library and that was part of a $450,000 renovation project funded uh, also by New York State and uh, private grants uh, through the State Library Fund. So that was a match that they had to in order to leverage? They far exceeded their match. Okay. The match requirement was 25% of the project cost. Gotcha. So, uh, and the maximum grant per a building was 50,000. So, uh, but the grant was was um, specifically for Main Street projects, correct? Because one of the problems I always run into is Forestburg and Lumberland don't have a Main Street, so they're never able to apply for these grants. So could they, somebody change the wording and make it like, <laughs> quiet, well, we, Alan, what would you call well, it? Well, we had to follow the, uh, <laughs> we did it, we created another program. Right. Forsberg has to create a commercial district first. We'll have to, uh, <laughs> Lumberland, we did apply in terms of the support and the interest that, you know, with the 18 so projects that came up, there was then demand for more projects. So in 2011, we applied again for okay. an extension and we included Lumberland that time, right, okay. uh, Pond Eddy. Right, okay. um, but we weren't funded. I think they want to spend spend this money first. I, I just so I'm before you move, you before want to start. I, I'm sorry. I just want to. I really want to compliment the planning staff and art staff and and all the various departments that pulled together to um, to get these projects completed. Because you know it was only a year ago, you know we were at the crossroads of whether we try to get the extension and move forward and complete these projects or give the money back. And yeah. you know we made the decision to, uh, you know, take the longer path and it's, you know, provided dividends for, for our communities. And uh, so, good work uh, to all involved. Thank you. Thank, thank I'd you like for to your compliment support. that as well because this is really enlightening for me because a lot of people are um, asking Calicoon and Narrowsburg and like that. I guess my biggest question is if it's a river corridor project and it obviously is successful because businesses are moving on to, but in my town I'm losing some of those businesses right. to those, you know, revitalized communities. So how do we, how do we um, get a community that's asking for, you know, a program like this? How do we start that? I guess my question was, who came together to accomplish those goals? And if a community is not in the corridor, how do we start that process? Should I? Well, maybe you could do Main Street. Yeah. I mean, Jefferson. I mean, Jefferson could apply for a main, or we could work Main's with them for a New York Main Street so grant. But I also, set up a meeting with, yeah. with planning and well, then. If they have a, I mean, one of the good things in these groups is that they had a community group that also came together. So like well, the Jeffersonville Gems and the village the, community group. So right. who who's the we? Because you, you know, you, you're in this we. case, there was um, a combination of strong partners in the business groups, but there was also from the countywide policy direction to try to support and tie together the river corridor there was there was a I would say there was a little bit of a top-down can um, we do one for the Creekside communities <laughs> sure <laughs> <laughs> but I think wait a minute <laughs> wait. I, I, let me run through some <laughs> examples and then we can talk about it because I think right. there's strategies how we want to expand I think there's strategies yes. that um, <laughs> this is a very competitive yeah. grant program is, is is a problem there's less money in it now and the grants are smaller so yes. my yes. take my response to your question is you build you build the other elements, you build the strength, you build the coordination, you build the interest in those areas through technical assistance, through smaller grants, maybe through the loan funds and coordination, and then you're ready with a, that much of a stronger application for a main, New York Main Street grant. Um, well, for example, we have the entities that are trying with the community development mm -hmm. and trying to put the people. Our problem, I believe, is what I saw in your, your PowerPoint here was um, touching, having meetings and touching base with the business owners mm -hmm. to cooperate and to realize what can be done. So is that something that I could set up with you? Or yeah, and I think, I think we, could, we can, you know, if, if Ethan goes through some of these before and after so you can see the projects that were done, but I think one of the things we would like to do, since we have invested so much time in getting an administration process down and working through all of these projects, 
that we want to keep continuing to right. do these projects if the board yes. is okay with that. Absolutely. Oh, because absolutely. we have yeah. great infrastructure now, and we yeah. know the process, and we know what needs to be mm -hmm. done. And so if we can start to identify these other communities mm -hmm. that we should be helping, okay, and we should go after thing. that. I don't want to hold it up too long, but I guess I could meet with you and figure out what the community has to do on their end right. to right. meet you in the middle, yep. right? Maybe right. Maybe so Because, yeah, we all have to play our part to... Okay, so I'll forward. touch base, and you can maybe summarize yeah. a list of steps for them to do when I can present to them at, the, at a meeting or something. Yeah. Okay. okay. So um, the rest is just pretty pictures or less, you know, it's a pretty picture, it's not a pretty building. So um, just some before and afters of the projects that were, not all of them, but some of the projects that uh, were assisted. And I'm putting Barryville first because these were certainly, it was unique, Barryville was unique for this program in that it's such a rural, relatively rural community in terms of a downtown or Main Street, but in the end I think we convinced the state that it was quite typical of many rural Main Streets, traditional um, historic core communities, and it was worth supporting. So um, this is a now, uh, this is at the corner of um, 97 and uh, Yulin Berryville Road. Uh, one of the two triangles in the map on of Berryville that we were trying to connect. So this is after, uh, it was an old canal house before. Um, I don't have, this is it here detail of it. The porch had been taken off. It had this 50s bay window and it was vacant um, when the, the owners bought it. So um, this is now functioning as a trendy bed and breakfast. Oh, it has nice. a great web presence. And then we were pleased and a, a theme that I was really happy about is they didn't have a tenant for this little second building over here but they went ahead and renovated it and then um, so now in 2013 here's the ribbon cutting. Um, the owner of Baker's Tap Room, I believe, was involved in opening a store here, and there's a new business here. And this is sort of hanging out, you know, you come up in the bed and breakfast, they got hammocks, and the interiors are quite cool and funky as well. That was the stick it in? Yes. Thank you, Mark. I was just going to say, you let's worked so hard to keep that out of the presentation. That they couldn't change. Thought that was commendable. Mm, yeah. So glad that we invited So, also in Berryville, here is at the other um, sort of end, bow tie, the other triangle, as you come in 97. And, and really, it's about slowing people down. As you, so, you don't whiz past Berryville, but you have a reason to stop. Um, so, this is a pretty compelling before and after. This was before when the owner bought the building. Um, minor tweaks. Um, it's still quite far back from the road, and we've talked to them about landscaping and control and sort of um, working on this sea of pavement in front of it um, to bring, again, slow people down, make it more pedestrian oriented. Um, another theme that I was pleased with is um, if you look at this slide, I think this is 2012, actually. Um, that's a vacant store. Um, and then this is that store. So while in terms of helping small businesses, some of these projects ha were assisting a business. Some places the business was the building owner. Some place the, the building owner did it on spec. Uh, maybe they had tenants. Um, but what we see, and I think typically why this is worth doing, is these are the spaces, even though when, the business cl when one business closed or, it, or it's weak or they go vacant, they're the spaces that, that a new business wants to open in. Um, the the vacant spaces. We're seeing that with the bakery in Livingston Manor, the right. Sorkin right. building. Right. So the, ba the businesses want to go. They don't want to have to do all this work themselves if they're starting up a business at the same time. So this, I believe, this is large media. I think they moved out of a home-based business into this space, in Nar from Narrisburg into this space in Berryville. Um, okay. So this is the after. No, just kidding. Um, but <laughs> here's the after. Um, this nice. is probably the biggest transformation, not a typical Main Street building. Um, pretty imaginative. Um, it's on the corner, of, but it's certainly a huge difference on the corner of 55 and uh, 97. And this this long panorama here is the view from when you come off the bridge from Shahola. And what you'd expect to see going to a tourism right. destination. <laughs> I love it. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, and can I make a suggestion? Because I know we're short on time, yeah. and people want to eat lunch and stuff. Is that we look at a designation as what we call a rural corridor, piggybacking on what uh, Ira said and what Kathy said, when Sullivan Rena Renaissance was trying to bridge mm -hmm. the all the different uh, towns along 17B 
yeah. so that there would be sort of like a minimum standard. Yeah, um, and there are design guidelines or precedents for that, so you're not sprawling out, but you're sort of reconcentrating those historic sin. And because there's a special part of a pot of money for you know distressed communities, which any community in Sullivan County can qualify for, mm -hmm. literally in the whole county. Um, then, if you've designated a rural corridor, it doesn't have to have a be not you know a place where it there is no. Okay. Main Street or yeah. downtown or whatever. In terms of also eligibility, I think the Office of Community Renewal who runs this is does have flexibility. If you propose, they have said, if you propose a creative approach to an existing program, that they will work with you. And I think with a track record after this finally done, I think they were really pleased with the results. They said it's we've actually never granted a nice. countywide application, a county application before, and one for multiple communities. And this would be this we see this as the model of how that would be. Well, that's two Street. first for Sullivan County from the state. First was Main Street, second is this. So let's keep it ahead of the curve. So I just want to uh, speed up Clancy. So that's that's an interior before. But, uh, you know, the colors make people happy. Maybe they're, maybe the people have, I mean, this guy's really happy. I'm loading the stool to the outside. And uh, the interior was only partially renovated, but um, there used to be a staircase to nowhere, if people remember it that sort of dead ended the ceiling. That's not shown here. But we did, um, for handicapped accessibility, the bathroom was really scary before and tiny <laughs> and through the kitchen. And we required that, in a, you know, they increase their investment, their local <coughs> match, their private match, and put in a handicapped accessible bathroom. Um, I'm really pleased with this one, that it, that it did happen. It was a real struggle. Um, a lot of these businesses, <coughs> given their location, are tourism based. So their construction season, when we're trying to get them to get their projects done, is the only time they make money. So um, with the extension that we received this year, um, with, wow. the with the uh, <coughs> extension this year, they were able wow, to man. get this done. So this is a hospitality, a lodging project in Sullivan County that um, was kind of scary before. Um, yeah, there were staircases, there were code staircases missing, there were code violations, um, and it really, uh, it's really clean. big paint job right. and construction and safety yeah. all on the exterior, but it makes it a more better presentation. Someone comes there is going to come back. Um, nice. This is the before in Calicoon. Um, I don't have a lot of pictures, but Michael Chinicki was the architect here for their streetscape project. And um, we worked with the Calicoon Business Association to get a Sullivan Renaissance Technical Assistance Grant to hire Michael um, to do the plans. And then this, again, was a safety issue, an accessibility issue. There was, um, and that's, trans this is the second year when the plants look really great this year. So um, over here then, you're looking at Lower Main Street, and these are two projects that were uh, involved. This one in the end, it was our technical assistance and work with them that got it renovated and looking really great. In the end, they didn't get the grant because the building was sold before uh, the grant closed out. And then the green building, here's Cafe Divine. Um, they had several phases, um, some, in, some before and after. An event room that they wanted to do, they wanted to rebuild this deck facing the river, and this is the owner's office. <laughs> so this is the deck afterwards. It yes. certainly looks better with people on it, but um, it really works well. It means that they can seat more people in the warm weather rather than building another dining room. So it's sort of flexible space that fits our season. And then the event room is this. They salvaged, <coughs> uh, we made these barn doors out of um, old doors they found in the basement. And that's the deck. And then uh, in 2013, between 2012 and 2013, they bought, um, the owner bought the, bought out the health food store next door um, with an IDA loan. Um, so this is some improvements that were done after the acquisition of the health food store. And then what we did this year was we finished the project, which was creating an ins inside connection through the office. That's this door. Is there. So her office is tucked in this little spot. That's the door to the event room, and then uh, working out the exits to the deck. Um, the Calicoon Branch Library I mentioned it was a much bigger project with state funding, but we, uh, with fifty thousand dollars, we were able to. That's about the cost of an elevator for a three-story elevator. Um, so that's the front of the building. The back is where an addition was proposed for an elevator. They needed a handicapped restroom and some uh, working out some things inside the building. So um, this is that addition on the rear that um, it's quite modern, but I think everyone finds it 
it, it harmonizes with the building without looking like um, looking like it was there forever. Um, so phase two or phase three for them was taking by having the elevator, they were able to make the base the first floor and basement handicap accessible, and then it was sort of a ma mini master plan in that the Masons Lodge that rented the second floor would be moving out in 2013, so they took over and renovated this space as a media and event room, and that was the ribbon cutting. And this is the view from the bridge, and this is another little commercial building. Um, the De Cristoforos own that, and that received a small grant for painting and restoring the outside, and so they fit together sort of as a little ensemble. And some of the interior shots, the only elevator in, in the river corridor, I believe, <laughs> maybe one of two or three in Sullivan County. And this is the space in that link to the elevator. Matthews on Main was a couple small projects, but um, I felt good about this. This was a business that had been on Main Street for 10 years, and needed, the building needed a, a paint job. And that's not a cheap thing for a restaurant that makes all its money you know, in the peak season. So this is the after, and refurbishing their signs. And then they came back this year when there was an extension. They put in, put in a um, $24,000 new roof and insulation. Um, throughout the building. Uh, this is the new foam insulation in the basement. We found uh, the roof wasn't just sagging, the whole wall was sagging, so with this as a structural repair we, <laughs> we were able to support in the basement that held up the back wall. Um, they, they refinished everything in the bar and they put an air conditioning in the bar so that they can sort of get through the summer. Um, the DVAA in Narrowsburg, this is, if you recall before, this is what, this is what the sidewalk looked like two years, three years ago, or two and a half years ago in Marisburg. Um, under construction, they proposed to reestablish the historic colonnade. And um, back then, when we started, they had had one, they had a, had a, a woodworker make one recreation of a column, and they wanted to match those across the facade. Um, so that meant that the, the balcony was no longer condemned, and in 2011, they had their gala at the end of the summer, and people could be out on the balcony. Um, we worked with them again in 2013. This is this is the colonnade from 2011, and they wanted to um, work on the storefront where the Park Service had rented space. And that's unfortunately over the course of the project, the Park Service moved out. So there's a if they don't have a tenant, there's a great new uh, beautiful <laughs> storefront there on Main Street in Arrowsburg. Um, then just another project in Narrowsburg. This building. Uh, is where the Heron is, Narrowsburg Fine Wines. Um, there were several small projects here. One of them, though, involved uh, planning for the future Big Eddie Esplanade along the river, which would be back here below the sidewalk, below the sidewalk grade. Um, so this was the former owner saying, conveying his vision to get down to that lower level on the outside. So a little tough to see, but there's a, now a staircase from the street. There's a gate, but a staircase from the street to get back there to this deck. Um, to that door, and then that's an, um, zoned and approved as an like an artist live workspace or workshop in the basement. <laughs> and um, we were able to give, with the extension, a little grant to the new owners. Um, I think it's a sign of success to that owner and to Narrowsburg that in 2013 they sold the building. Prior to that, they sold both businesses. The wine shop and Main Street Cafe was bought by the Heron. So the fact that these functions live on and people are interested in buying them as a sign of success in a Main Street. So the, the new owners of the wine shop had done a major renovation here when they bought it. They have these great, really imaginative windows. Um, this is his with the tax, taxidermy, and this is hers for Easter with like chicks and champagne. And, <laughs> um, and we funded this awning and an air conditioning system to keep so that they could have tastings and you know, we have to keep wine cool. So um, just to wrap up, I think the, the evidence of the benefits is that we talked about um, and the, the sort of which seemed to make it worthwhile to continue program, a program like this with or without the state funding are um, but the principles being sort of leveraging existing resources and expertise to attract outside funding. Um, I think the projects created a critical mass effect in some of these hamlets through cross clustering projects rather than dispersing them. There's a spillover effect by coordinating this work with the LWRP programming, the Sullivan Renaissance programs, um, uh, the revolving loan funds. And um, what you begin to see 
and maybe you all have seen in visiting these places and not really knowing quite where these changes were coming from, but that um, it's fostered a slow but steady reinvestment in some of the county's traditional Main Street areas um, with a multiplier effect in that vacant spaces fill up faster, um, local contractors participate, um, as do the lumber yards and supply houses, and overall the pu public has a positive feeling that these communities are turning around and um, will feel good. Very good. I mean, it's awesome. <laughs> Can I Thank just you. say that happened without casino game? <laughs> just because there's a lot of feeling that you can only do stuff once casino yeah. gaming comes in. And I think this is a good example of, you know, work with what you have, pull yourself up from your bootstraps. Yeah, I think we also need to make sure that we actually get one, too, because it's, it's going to be very well, competitive. We <laughs> Don't spend the money yet. That's <laughs> uh, quick question now uh, for Jill. <coughs> what role do the community development corps play in revitalization of our main streets, et cetera, if any at all? You mean like a local development? Right, right like, like Liberty City. Bethel CBC. and Liberty. Do they, do they pursue main street grants on their own? Or? They do. So, Heinrich so has. Li Liberty, yeah, Liberty. Liberty CDC, actually there's one on here. Liberty CDC had a um, 2010 main street grant as well, the same year that this was funded. So they, they, they also have a loan have program. Uh, yes, they can. Typically, historically, they were they the lead applicants. Capacity. The challenge in Sullivan County was we have only two LDCs, the Bethel Local Development right. Corporation, right. and who had gotten a main street grant in Liberty. CDC. Would it be something that the villages and towns should maybe consider developing their own CDC or? I don't think so, and I'll tell okay. you why. When we created the Main Street Redevelopment Center, when I was here as planning commissioner. We did it because there was not capacity at the local level, and many municipalities just simply didn't have the resources to hire full-time staff to do it. So the legislature at the time embraced the concept of creating a Main Street program, and they said, you know, basically a lot of what we did through the Main Street program was provide the technical assistance to help those small little hamlets and uh, little Main Street centers throughout the county to come up with programs, to come up with design guidelines, to begin to identify projects, and the county planning staff really administered, uh, you know, the, those that program on behalf of the municipalities. And I think, you know, while the larger municipalities like Liberty or Bethel, you know, have LDCs, um, you know, much of the success in in Livingston Manor. The initial success was the county planning division working with Livingston Manor. We secured grants for the sidewalks. We did a number of facade projects. Uh, we had the revolving loan fund. Um, so, you know, I think there's still an important role for the county to play, and especially with uh, the next round of the CFA, we have a revolving loan fund. Uh, I would suspect there's an opportunity through CDBG to. Um, secure additional funding for that uh, to, you know, put additional dollars in the revolving loan fund. There will be an opportunity to New York Main Street, hopefully, to pursue additional funding for grants. And um, I just think, you know, there's a certain economies of scale um, just due to the simple cost of having full-time staff that it requires uh, not every town in the county is going to be able to afford to do it. I don't see long at a. You know, we don't have the density or population or the people involved yet. I think we have to create that critical mass before more CDCs or LDCs are created, in my opinion. There could be a countywide right. LDC that does some of those functions or a community development corporation. But I think yeah. the point yeah. is that there are many communities are too small to staff and fund their own. Or they would have one staff. I mean, Bethel LDC has funded about a third time staff person. Liberty CDC has one full-time staff person. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Uh, public comment? Oh, I have a, oh, on, on this, you mean? Yeah. Okay, sorry. No, I know. No, no public comment. Uh, it doesn't have to be on this. Uh, no, I think she has a report. Yeah, she has a report. Uh, oh, no, no, I'm <coughs> sorry. Yes, yeah, we'll get. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, uh, along, uh, along with your theme that you're talking about, uh, it's interesting when I was out in California, I had an opportunity to spend about three oh, weeks sorry. out there with my daughters. And the mall, all the malls have their own theme. Look at that. And every, everybody, everything within this, the roof structures, the facades, they're all the same. And, and it makes a world of difference when you're traveling through and looking at it or going to them. Um, 
are talking about a theme, I think we need to come up with a county theme that translates down to towns. They have their own themes because of the town. Or you take a hamlet like Hurleyville, where you get a nice main street on the north side of where the tracks used to be, uh, where the residential part of it is, where there are nice porches and so forth on a lot of those houses. And you know, how do we foster this and to keep it going and to improve on it? Because some of these old main streets have a certain personality that we can work on and, and benefit from. Yeah, I didn't, Nancy, I'm sorry. I just kind of lost track of my schedule here. So please, you can do the uh, I just report. wanted kind of to thing. make the legislators aware that we're putting out a press release today. You all know that we had commenced our foreclosure proceeding in October. January 31st is the last day to redeem or get into an installment agreement because we put it out to the press. And plus, this time of year, we like to remind um, your constituents and the people of Sullivan County that the time period is coming to an end, and hopefully they will come in and take care of their delinquent taxes. Thank you. Thank you. Can I mention the secret training? Yeah, Jill's just going to mention some upcoming training that we have. Um, so uh, the partnership has been coordinating in, in um, cooperation or partnering with, with the planning department to offer a seeker training with the new changes that have happened. Um, it will be held next Wednesday the 15th at the Sullivan. Uh, it was supposed to be at Bernie's, but we've had over 140 people register, so we're actually moving into the Sullivan. So um, it looks like it's going to be a great event. Um, so if anybody is interested in attending, um, it is at 5 o'clock to 9.30, and they're actually uh, serving some food. So um, you do need to, if you could register, they are handing out handouts, so it, we need to kind of know um, if you want handouts, but we'll have them available electronically, oh, yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but that's it. Can we register online or where? Uh, you would register with the partnership, so uh, Michelle at 794-1110. Oh okay, I gotta ask for a motion to adjourn. Sorry, I only have 10 minutes for lunch. <laughs> That's good.